If you've been watching my channel long enough, you'll see the consistency in that my channel's mission is to bring the reality of the heavenly realm into our minds at all times. You might feel great when you sing a song at Mass and feel great after a rosary, but do we take that feeling and apply it to the fact that the heavenly realm is real and all around us at all times, and do we remember that? That's what my channel is supposed to help us all do and help me to do. And so here are some great saint quotes that I love that help to this end. This one's by St. Bernardine of Siena. You must know that when you hail Mary, she immediately greets you. Don't think that she is one of those rude women of whom there are so many. On the contrary, she is utterly courteous and pleasant. If you greet her, she will answer you right away and converse with you. Whoa. So when you're in your bed at night and you're lying there and you're like, Oh, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. She's in your presence. Now, there have some, been some great saints out there who can see when she shows up. But then there are us who don't see when she shows up. But the fact is that she has shown up to us as well. But we are not... God doesn't want us to see for certain reasons that we do not know that will benefit us. Next one. When you say the rosary, this is Our Lady to Blessed Ellen de la Roche, or Roche, the, um, yeah, okay. When you say your rosary, the angels rejoice, the blessed trinity delights in it, my son finds joy in it too, and I myself am happier than you can possibly guess. After the holy sacrifice of the mass, there is nothing in the church I love as much as the rosary. Then Our Lady to Saint Meltide says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. No creature has ever said anything that was more pleasing to me, nor will anyone ever be able to find to or say to me anything that pleases me more. Now here's St. Padre Pio on Guardian Angels. Do you think that the angels go as slowly as the planes? <laughs> Never forget the guardian angel who is always with you, never leaving you for whatever wrong you might do. How many times, alas, I have made him cry for not doing what he wanted and complying with his wishes, which were the same as God's. May this, our most faithful friend, free us from further disloyalty. Do not complain of not having a friendly soul to whom you can unburden yourself and in whom you can confide your sorrow. For pity's sake, says Pontre Pio, do not forget this invisible companion, always present to listen to you, always ready to console you. So I've got one here right now with me, apparently, and that's pretty crazy. And you have one right there with you, individually created for you. That's nuts. Oh, what a holy and solitary thought it is to want to see this, our good angel. It is this thought which should make us want to leave this dark prison in which we are bound. Sin. <laughs> Where do my thoughts fly to now? Padre says. Treat this dear little angel, I do not say as a friend, but as family. And to, to tell you the truth, this little angel does not seem to be the least bit offended by my treatment of him. How dear and good he is. Padre Pio. St. Catherine Emmerich, I have uh, good four quotes from her. I'm just going to go right in a row. Saints are particularly powerful on their feast days and should be invoked then. Okay, guys, got to watch the feast days. That's pretty neat. I saw how the various indulgences we gain actually remit to specific punishments which otherwise would await us in purgatory. Yeesh. So I've got all these specific punishments awaiting me in purgatory right now. And so I should probably get to remitting them. And so should you. I have seen the strong link even long after their deaths between holy souls in heaven and their descendants here on earth, lasting even centuries. That's crazy because today we've had a... Everyone alive today is the result of a surviving familial line that goes back like 3,000, 4,000, however long ago, years. And that's amazing, making each one of us alive today a miracle of survival. That's nuts. And so to everyone alive today has tons of people who died before them and way more possibilities of having more people up in heaven praying for them right now. So we should get some great saints in this century, guys. Oh, St. Catherine Emmerich on Mary. This is like my favorite. Okay, ready? She knows everything, and yet she seems to know nothing. So childlike is she. 
She lowers her eyes, and when she looks up, her glance penetrates like a ray, like a pure beam of light, like truth itself. It is because she is perfectly innocent, full of God, and without return upon self. None can resist her grace. And that's why Satan hates her so much, Marius. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe that quote. Oh, it kind of freaks me out a little bit with how real that, that description of her is. Like, she's a real human being, okay? What if there's a real human being that just walked in the room and she just had a glance that penetrated with innocence? Like, whoa. <laughs> and now she's in heaven, so it's, it's like, transferred into, like, light. That same innocence is transferred to light. And she's gorgeous. All right. Oh. Another one from, from Emmerich. Here we go. All over the world I saw num numer numerous infusions of the spirit, sometimes like a lightning stroke falling upon a congregation in church, and I could tell who among them had received the grace. Or again, I beheld individuals praying in their homes like you do late at night, and these individuals were suddenly endowed with light and strength. So keep up that uh, nighttime rosary, everyone. Here's St. Bernadette. When asked, was she beautiful? St. Bernadette replied, oh, oh, yes, indeed. And even more than that, in fact, so lovely that when you have seen her once, you would willingly die to see her again. I mean, just think about that. I think I would agree with that if I saw the Virgin Mary, who apparently her glance penetrates like a ray because you're so innocent and full of God. If I saw that human being, I'd be like, I want to go where that human being is. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to get out of here. So I can understand Bernadette's description. I want to hear a funny quote from St. Bernadette I really like. They think I'm a saint, and when I'm dead, they'll come and touch holy pictures and rosaries to me, and all the while, I'll be getting broiled on a grill in purgatory. <laughs> At least promise me you'll pray a lot for the repose of my soul. St. Bernadette. That's funny. And here she is, incorruptible. So we're like, um, you're incorrupt, and we, we know you're not broiling on a, on a grill. We're pretty sure. <sighs> and then here's the quote from Padre Pio I put in the video before. When asked if the Blessed Virgin is present at Holy Mass, he said, Yes, she places herself at a side, but I can see her, and what a joy that is. She is always present. How can it be that the mother of Jesus, present in the Calvary at the foot of the cross, who offered her son as a victim for salvation of souls, not be present at the mystical, mystical Calvary of the altar? So I, I'm like sitting in Mass thinking about the whole apparition that's going on, and I can't see the fact that Mary is right there is just as she appeared to Bernadette at, at Lourdes, but we just can't, can't see her. And not only just Mary, but everyone who ever attended Mass, and it's nuts. It's crazy thoughts, crazy thoughts, and I hope the, I'm hoping these are helping you to um, concretely place the reality of the heavenly realm in your mind at all times, and I'll try to keep the videos coming so that is possible for everyone and for myself. God bless everybody, and please leave your prayer petitions in the comments below, and I will try to pray for them, and if you guys would pray for me too, that would be wonderful because all my videos, me, are the product of your prayers and your support, and that's why I'm still here today and with God's will. Thank you everyone. God bless.